talking about a Joe here. Um, first off, before we get into the meat and potatoes of uh, this video, I want to take a second to apologize to everybody for not getting up a video sooner. Uh, I've had some major issues with my computer system, namely a really flaky hard drive that was appearing that for all intents and purposes uh, intents and purposes appeared to be on the verge of going south on me big time and I had to take care of it because everything that I had was on there and the last backup that I had was about three months ago actually no more like two months ago and I needed to get that taken care of before it totally crapped out on me and I was so far up the creek that you would even GPS wouldn't find me okay so once again I want to apologize to everybody for that secondly I want to say something here this is the third time I've recorded this thing tonight um, mostly because of the ums uh, I try not I'm trying desperately not to um, <laughs> like I said I'm not a public speaker by any stretch of the imagination. I never took public speaking in college. I never did anything like that. I'm not really comfortable speaking to a lot of people, so please bear with me. Um, <laughs> there we go again. I'm trying my best not to bore you or to drive your ears crazy and to drive you away because of the way I, I speak. Unfortunately, when I don't have the ums to connect different things that are floating around up here, I have a tendency of sounding like somebody, well, I'm not going to say it. It's, it's not polite. I guess you can understand what I'm saying. It's very stilted. So therefore, please understand that I'm trying not to bore you, and as such, I'm trying not to revert to my normal self. If I did, your ears would probably hurt. I know my wife has been complaining, telling me this for years and well, I've tried. I just guess, I guess I'm just the thick-headed SOB. So that's that. Also another thing, I'm going to try not to chit-chat away too much. Um, I'm <sighs> I'm going to try and turn around and get to the point, but not to the point where it sounds like this is a dissertation by a very boring professor. The I think the one from Ferris Bueller's Day Off is like the one that sticks in my head. I think it pretty much sticks in everybody's head. Anybody? Anybody? Mm. Yeah, I, I think I would turn around and be trying to cut slices off of a petrified tree with a chainsaw at that point. So, please bear with me. This is a learning experience for me. You're seeing me evolve before your eyes. Um, this is going to be... It's going to be an interesting thing. So, okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm... I'm speaking for the from here, okay? Well, actually, down here, a little bit further down. So, having said that, let's get into the meat and potatoes of why we're here. In my last video, I kind of explained to you my story of how I got into vaping. So, I'm not going to bore you with that yet again. One of my other videos, I think the first video I did, I went on for about 15 minutes about the story and, and, and tried to explain it along with the, the, the ums. And I was starting to fall asleep while I was watching it. So I can imagine what you guys would have done if you had seen it. You probably, you either would have been laughing yourself silly or you would have turned around and you would have been snoring away like really heavily. And who knows, if you have a problem with insomnia, it might have been great great thing for you. I don't know, but that's that's where it is. 
this is the first kit that I got. This is my first e-sig. Yes, it still works. Um, it's a 60, it's a 600 milliamp hour Ego style battery with the standard Ego comb thread on here. That's this threading that you see there. Like any Ego battery, it also has a 510 connector in the center there. You can see. Yeah, let me just look at the video. Yeah, you can probably see it in there if I hold it right. Yeah, well. Uh, standard five clicks to turn it on. One, two, three. Oh, it's already on. <laughs> Sorry about that. But yeah, that's the that's the light show you get. Turning it on, turning it off. And this particular battery, one, two, three, four, five, when you turn it on, it gives you a blue flashing light when it's fully charged. It goes to yellow and then to red um, when it's charge drops below a certain point, and then red when it gets down to approximately 3.4, 3.2 volts, somewhere in that range. I, I never actually I never actually stuck this thing on a voltmeter when it was down that far to find out exactly what it's um, what the voltage was on it when it started going red so um, my bad sorry about that this thing here would give me about an, the way I was vaping at the time gave me about an hour's worth of vape time literally one hour with approximately a two hour two and a half hour charge time so when this I'm sitting here chain vaping because I have just like three four five days two weeks up to about two weeks post my last smoke and this thing is constantly going south on me I'm plugging it in and trying to charge it up that's well that's this this gets plugged into your standard USB charger that you can plug into the wall or into your computer if you haven't got one. And this end here is the business end. This is the part that gets screwed into this just like so. And once you screw it in here and this is plugged into the charger, well, even before you screw this in, when you plug this into the charger, you've got a little pilot light here that lights up green. When you plug in your dead on arrival battery as you can see if when I press this you see that little green light there well if this was plugged in all the time that little green light would be on steady you would then make sure before you actually screw this in here one two three four five make sure it's turned off screw it in to place and the second it makes the contact this would change from green to red and this would change to whatever color was in it indicated that the battery's charge state was at usually red okay in this case the way it sits right now it would be blue because this is this battery is fully charged like I said it would take about two to two and a half hours for this thing to charge I'm sure you can understand the um, well I call them the nya uh that comes in when you're you're sitting there and your nicotine level is dropping to dangerously low levels which some of the antis would say is very very good low levels well in <laughs> um, that was enough to drive me up the tree um, I realized very quickly that this by and of itself was not going to work. I got on to a Skype call with my cousin Dottie over in England and I was talking with her and I was quizzing her even more than I had been about the uh, the unit that she had and she had a Inakin VV which is variable voltage, variable wattage, uh, version 3. And I got in touch. I went around. I was looking to see where I could turn around and purchase it from at a relatively inexpensive cost because I still wasn't sure whether or not the 
the these ESIG things were going to turn around and actually work for me. So I didn't want to go spending too much money on something that I might wind up not having a lot of use for and also not have around for very long because I'm going to wind up getting so frustrated and chucking it out the window like I was with this thing because it kept dying, the battery kept dying. I couldn't blame this thing because, you know, battery's got just a certain amount of lifespan and it's going to turn around and when you, you get it below a certain point, it's, it's going to die. So I had to find something else. I went out to a company called FastTech, um, ordered one of her, uh, ordered a unit just similar to hers. And I knew that thing was going to take a while to get in because I had been hearing some rumors floating around on some of the forums that FastTech was anything but fast. I came to find from personal experience that they should have changed their name from fast tech to slow tech because of how long it took to get the damn unit that I had just ordered from them to get there. It took almost a month to get there. Uh, I ordered it the middle of April. I didn't get in until like the middle of May. It took me almost a month to get there. And in the meantime, I'm going crazy with this thing. So what I did was is I went out to another uh, brick and mortar store on Route 22, not far away from the place where I bought this unit. And I went out and I got these. These are Ego batteries. These are Ego T's. Um, they're exactly like this thing, except that this is 600 milliamp hours and these are 1100 each. Well, being almost the double the capacity of this thing, I figured it's going to help me out a while. It's going to help me out to keep me going while I'm waiting for the, the, the Inakin to come in. And they sure as heck did. Between the three of them, I was able to turn around, I was able to successfully vape, get my nicotine, maintain my nicotine levels, um, and not go crazy in the process. While I was vaping on one of these, the other one would be charged sitting there ready and waiting this one to die, and the other one was on the charger. They charge on the same thing. I went out and I got an extra charger to be able to make sure that I had a charger if I needed a second charger. And there have been a couple of times when I actually did. And I was able to successfully keep myself going uh, all the time using this. Well, not all the time, but most of the time using this. Um, this thing got real old real quick. It drove me nuts. It's this is basically this this Clarivisor head is basically a throwaway. Um, you cannot take the um, the head out from in here. It is a fixed head. It, it, it's a fixed device. This is basically a throwaway. Uh, when the head finally does go south on you, you take this and you go toss. Not only that, this is only 1.6 milliliters of juice in here. And the, the tightness of the draw on this thing and the amount of vapor production that this thing puts out, well, the tightness on the draw, I think, Matt from Suck My Mod, was close when he described it as trying to suck a golf ball through a garden hose. In this case, this was more like trying to suck a softball through a garden hose. Okay, um, because there was only 1.6 milliliters in here, I was constantly filling this thing. I mean, I was seriously, I was chain vaping. I would sit here and every three to five seconds, I'd be hitting this thing yet again. Now, I was using uh, 12 milligram nicotine 
I probably should have gone up higher, but I didn't because of two reasons. One, getting a lot of burning in my throat. Most of the people I had been reading and listening, reading from and listening to on the various outlets said that it could have been one of two things. One, too much nicotine. Two, PG. That I had a sensitivity to PG. Well, as it turns out, after a while, after I stopped really using this, it turns out that it was actually both. Um, the nicotine level was at, at 12 was too much. I had to go down to 10. And that helped. But when I started making my own juice, and instead of using a 50-50 blend, which was like, which was what I was using, I went to more of a 60 or 70 uh, VG blend. And between the two of them, it went poofta, gone, bye-bye. Um, when I went to the 10 from the 12, the nicotine level was, it was like I was vaping more, but my throat was feeling better which is almost counterintuitive if you really think about it. But it worked, and it was actually the case. Well, I needed to vape more because the nicotine level was lower. But because the nicotine level was lower, my throat wasn't, I was getting, wasn't getting so much of a throat hit. Cool. Still bothering me, though. When I went over to the higher VG con uh, ratio, that's when the sore throats really stopped. I mean, like, gone. Put two claramizers through my, uh, through two, two, 3.2 uh, 3 milliliters through this thing, and my, my sore throat was gone. History. Never to see it again. So I knew that it was not only because of the, the, the nicotine level, but also because it was because of the PG. I did try bringing my nicotine level up, and I found out that yeah, that was a comp that really was a component of it. So at 70 VG, 30 PG, and 12 nicotine, uh, my my sore throat started coming back. Okay. Went down to the, went back down to the ten, stayed there, ever since that point. From that point until a little bit later on, I was vaping at ten nicotine, seventy thirty, VG to PG, and it worked. But this, this didn't like it so much. So, I was really stuck because this thing here was even harder to suck through. So at that point, I had to really find out what was going, you know, I had to get something that could turn around and actually work. At that point, I found through listening to um, different guys' videos, Protein 2. I used this up to and including during the time after I got the in the eye taste in. I had this on my eye taste and I was using this. I also used the uh, eye clear, excuse me, the eye clear 16s that came with it for a while just to see if which one was better and you know just to basically you know test the two of them out against each other. Well, the iClears lost the ProTank 1. Uh, in video number 4, which I have not shot yet, I will be getting into these ProTanks. But leave it for, suffice to say for now, this, is, this was used on these 
as well as the um, as well as the Inican I Taste VV. So I will be getting into these things. Those were godsend. You know, just in case some of you have never seen these things before, you and and hopefully you uh, won't go with this type of equipment because this stuff here is while this is basic equipment and it'll get you going if you can get it now even cheaper than what the 40 bucks that it cost me for for the whole kit um, it's not worth it seriously it's not worth it if somebody gives you one for free to to try and and and, and use it to get you over that first couple of weeks fantastic don't don't not accept it take it use it um, but to go out and buy one no don't spend your money on this if somebody gives it to you for free as like a pay it forward or they're trying to help you to smoke and it, it, to get out of smoking and they say look I really don't have anything else to give you other than this don't turn your nose up at it take it okay take it use it get yourself over that first couple of weeks because those those are the hardest man I'm telling you those 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 are really hard uh, but take it and use it and you want to use it this is how you make use of it I'll show you okay this is what it looks like inside you see that little oops hold on there we go you see that little black tube in the center that's where the air comes up that comes up from here in the bottom okay let me see if I can angle this here to get the light in there. Yeah, you see that little tube in the center, that little black dot in the center? That's where the air comes in. It comes in through these little cross notches here, these little notches here in the I'll close that, bring that up here a little closer. We, yeah, there you go. You see that little notch? The air comes in through there, gets sucked in, cuts in through the little notches there on the top of the battery see them? it's not going to focus in of course um, then it gets sucked in through into the center tube gets brought up through the tube here hits the atomizer coil in here with the coil firing it vaporizes the juice as you're sucking in on it it brings in the air mixes the, the atomized juice with the air you suck it out through the mouthpiece and as the juice gets vaporized by the coil it sets up a capillary action through the through these wicks here just kind of almost exactly like the same way of a, a, a flame on a candle works the, that's the reason why the flame on the candle practically never goes down for the simple reason as it burns the wax the wax flows up the candle wick and the wax actually gets burnt by the flame in this case the juice flows up through these it flows up these wicks gets to the it gets to the atomizer head the atomizer head heats the juice up to steam and then sends it out through the mouthpiece. As that does that, it creates like a negative pressure in here and pulls up through capillary action. I'm not exactly, I'm not totally versed on how capillary action works exactly, but it does. And that's exactly the principle that's used here. It pulls the juice up. And as it does that, this comes down. The juice level in here comes down. So, in order to fill one of these things, you hold this over to one side, take your juice bottle, put it in here, and just dribble. Now, you should be able to see the juice flowing in there. I just purposely decided to use my uh, raspberry cream so that way you could see how this flows in there. I'm not going to flow it in there too much, but just that much, that should do it. That is approximately 1.5 milliliters of juice in there. 
So then once you put that in, you would fill this up to the 1.6 level. Put this back on here. Okay. Now if you look very carefully, you see the, the wicks are starting to bring up the juice from the reservoir. You see how the, the wicks are starting to get juicy? How they're starting to, show, starting to glisten and start to turn tr almost translucent from the white color? Well, that's the juice getting up there to the wick, uh, to, to the coil. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take a couple dry pulls on this without firing it. That starts to get the juice up there. I'm going to put this on here, like so. One, two, three, four, five. Now, the actual Ego batteries will flash blue when it's turning on, but when you hit it, it turns green. Then goes to yellow, then goes to red. This one just uses goes blue to yellow to red. Okay, that's the 600 milliamp hour one. This is 1100. So let me show you the difference between of what this is. These things here are strictly mouth to lung. In other words, you suck it in with your mouth the same way you would when you're as you were smoking. You suck in the vapors produced by the coil, then you inhale it in into your lungs. By the time you get through, <coughs> I got a dry hit. Oh yeah, that's one of the problems with these things. These things have a hard time keeping up with keeping the coil fed. Now, a dry hit is not that really that bad with these things. For the simple reason, this is silica wick in here. It's basically a fiberglass. It's going to turn around and taste nasty. Uh, it's going to have nasty things that you're going to get, but it's not going to kill the wick, and it's not going to toast the wick like as if this was cotton. This, really, believe it or not, is a stealth vapor. The, the, the ohm reading on this thing is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about two plus ohms. Actually, let's find out. Let's just see for the fun of it. Just what the, just let's see what the resistance level on this is. I never actually did. 1.94 ohms. Wow. I would have thought that it was a lot higher than that. This is actually almost a, a, a 1.9 ohm coil in here. I would have thought that this was much higher. I'm, that's the first time I actually ever measured the, the resistance on the coil in here. It's, I guess it's the airflow in here that makes this, the, the airflow on this thing that makes it so hard to do, so hard to use. You know, every time I use this, I wonder, seriously wonder how the hell the guys who were vaping these things, this, is a, this thing here is actually generation one, latter generation one. The things that the guy, the old guy, the old timers like, like, Grim Green, when he first started back in 07 and 05, was, oh my god, this, this, this was like Nirvana for him. This would have been like Nirvana for him. I, I don't understand how the hell they did it. I really don't. This is, you know, but I'll just show you what I mean.
That's from this. That's the kind of cloud I've been using from this. This is my little K Fun 4. It's in long mode uh, because I prefer the, the larger size tank. Um, this gives me a six, almost 6 mil fluid capacity. This is 1.6. This is actually this, roughly the same coil resistance that this is. This is a 1. Point, this, well, actually, this is a 1.6. See? Let's see if we'll suck in there. Yeah, 1.6 ohms. I'm rocking this thing at 18.4 watts. This thing here is a big whopping 3. 3.7, 3.71 roughly. 3. Point, yeah, 3 is 3. Points, yeah, it's bouncing around, but. 3.67, 3.67, and you see how that thing was flashing like that? That's because that's, it gives you a 10 second limit. So you figure about 3.6 volts. Now, if you sit down and do the math, uh, hold on, let me, we, let me just refresh my memory. It's been a while since I've had to use this. So we're looking for watts, and we've got... Okay, so that's voltage squared divided by resistance. So your voltage was 3 point... Oh, I can't, I can't use this calculator. i got to go to the scientific calculator. Okay, so we had 3.67 volts, and we're going to square that and then we're going to divide that by the 1.9 so this is actually giving me 7 watts this is actually giving me 7 figure 7.1 rounded off to, to first decimal point 7.1 watts uh, yeah this is my this is my little cheat sheet I keep it around just give you an idea what it looks like um, I've had this for a while um, can't remember all of the the figures at you know any one given time I remember one or two the one or two that I actually use the most but voltage divided but voltage and resistance I'm using that a lot more lately but as a as a tech I don't usually use that one quite so much so yeah, um, 7.1 watts, 7.1 watts, this is 18.4 watts. This battery, if I'm lucky, this is an 1100 milliamp hour battery, if I'm lucky I'll get like two and a, two, two and a half hours on this. This battery here I've got on here, this mod, two days. This is 1100 milliamp hours. This is 4400 milliamp hours. Okay. Give you an idea where I, what I went, started with, and what I've been using lately. Okay. Um, this is my home setup. When I go out, I use Kanger Pro, the Kanger uh, K10. Um, duh. Um, Brain fart. It, it's the Kanger OCC coil, um, the one that comes in the K box kit. I use that one primarily because it allows me to have a coil with an extra coil with me just in case something happens. Because this one here, I'd have to sit down and build it. So uh, that one, if I'm out and about, um, I should happen to drop it, and the coil goes south on me. I can just pull out one coil, pop in another coil, wrap the one that went bad up in a piece of paper tissue and put it in a plastic baggie or something like that, pop it in my pocket or in my bag, my bag or whatever, bring it home and I can work on it when I get home.
That's where it's at. As you can see, the difference between the two. Um, this video has gone on for 35, going on 36 minutes now. I think that's pretty much most of what I had to say. Um, I don't want to bore you too much. The, the, the next video is going to be, the next one's going to be a real long one because that's going to be taking care of a couple of different things and I'm going to be going into a lot of detail on the VV. So um, I'm going to chop out of here with you now because I still got to edit this here to otherwise I'm not going to be able to put it up there. So having said that, I'm going to take off and I'm going to let you get back to what you're doing. Oh, one thing, um, two things, actually two things I want to say. Uh, one, there is a new thing out there if you um, called Adopt a Smoker. Uh, you can go to Facebook and you can type in Adopt a Smoker, uh, Sponsor a Smoker, I'm sorry, Sponsor a Smoker. If you're a smoker, you can go there, you can fill out their, they have a form, um, follow along through the thing. I believe you have to send them, if you really want to get involved with it, you send them a photocopy or fax them a photocopy or email them a photocopy of your license just to prove that you're 18. It's because they want to make sure that no kids get a hold of this stuff. Um, and then they'll set you up with a vapor in your area that will has volunteered to to help to get you through some of the stuff that's out there. Hopefully, some of my videos might be able to help you as well. Um, there are a lot of other videos out there that could that can help you out as well. Uh, look at check out Phil Bussardo if you want the technical aspects of the devices that you're dealing with. Um, more of the um, lifestyle would come from uh, Nick Green, Grim Green. The average Joe on the street living and using with it, Demetrius the Vaping Greek, Demi's a great guy. Um, check out some of his uh, other videos. He does a lot of um, advocacy. They will turn around. They have a lot more videos out there than what I've got. They've been doing this for a lot longer. Um, it's also, uh, if you're more of an artistic person and you have um, that kind of artistic flair to yourself, check out Ruby Roo. That's Ruby. R U B Y R O O. She does, she's she's got the same kind of flair. She may turn around. She may resonate more with you than than like with the Phil Vasardo video. Okay, um, different strokes for different folks. Different people have different styles. I still I'm still trying to find my style. So bear with me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, check that out. Sponsor a smoker. Uh, if you're a smoker and you want to go, you want to get off your smokes, go there. They'll help you out. If you're a vapor, you've got old equipment like some of the stuff that I've got here, um, and there's a smoker in your area. Sponsor them yourself. Help them out. Um, but. Tell them to go through Sponsor a Smoker because they want to, Sponsor a Smoker wants to get the metrics because those metrics are important when it comes to uh, fighting the legislation that's going to be put through a lot of state houses in the next year. Um, we need to show that, yes, this does help people stop smoking. Yes, this does help get them off the stinkies, as some people call them or analogs as some people call them. Um, put them into the system so that way they can they can track their progress so they can turn around they can develop this information. This information is extremely valuable to not only CASA 
for doing this kind of information, but for some of the researchers that are out there that are that are doing some of the hard science that we need to have to back up some of the claims that we know are true. We have anecdotal information. We don't have hard science done by hard scientists. And the regulators and the lawyers and the legislatures don't want to hear diddly squat unless they can turn around. Somebody's got a whole alphabet soup after their name. And they need data. And we can give them the data. We just have to mine that data ourselves. Information such as who you are, your name, your address, and all that kind of information, they don't get that. They get the information of how many times you vaped, you know, you check in with, with sponsor or smoke. If you're a smoker and you're trying to quit, you check in with them, I understand, like once a week or something like that. They ask you a few questions. You say, um, well, I smoke, I, I had one or two cigarettes or I didn't have any cigarettes at all. How many times do you vaped roughly? Um, a day, um, you know, how much juice have you used, stuff like that. I don't know exactly what the, their full questions are, but if you get in touch with them, they can actually tell you what their questions are so you can, you can get an idea as to whether or not you want to get involved with this, okay? Um, if you want to help somebody out who's a smoker, um, you want to give back something to the community to help out, what's, help out everybody, get in touch. They've, I understand they have quite a few very big names in the industry who have been donating, um, well, stuff like this. Stuff like VV, other stuff. Similar, similar you know, um, Generation 1 Plus and Generation 2, my, you know, early Generation 2 uh, equipment that most, most vapors won't Go near, most regular vapors or who are vapors won't go near because it doesn't do what they want it to do or what they need it to do. But it's perfect for a smoker. And they give it to you guys who are still smoking for free. So you get your first kit for free. And it'll help you to get off the cigarettes and to help you to get to a point where you can make a decision as to whether or not you want to stay a vapor or you want to go completely off both the cigarettes and the vaping that's your choice okay these things are great they'll give you the nicotine that your body has been looking for but it will also keep you off of the cigarettes which is what's going to wind up killing you because that smoke is what's going to kill you okay uh, like I said that was about another <laughs> That was almost eight minutes worth of rant there, but it's very important. So like I said, Facebook, sponsor a smoker, check it out, whether you're a smoker or you're a vapor. Also check out CASA. doesn't cost you anything to get in touch with CASA and join, with that, and join up with them. No fees, anything like that, totally free. Numbers are important. We, we need to show numbers to the regulators and to the legislatures in each and every state and each and every municipality to show them that we're there. We vape and we vote. And basically to tell them, you want to keep your job? Look out for us too. A lot of vapors are becoming one, one subject voters. So, Vaping Militia, Vaping Militia, get in touch with them, join with them, they, bodies are always needed, numbers are needed, get in touch with not blowing smoke, not blowing smoke needs help, they, they need monetary money because they're doing the, the media and public relations side of the fight, they need, their, they need your help. Till then, I'm out of here. You're out of here. Take care. May the wind always be at your back.